Hello and welcome to the quantum dot lab at JNCASR. Here our primary research focus is synthesis and optical properties of semiconductor nanomaterials and today we are going to give a guided tour to our lab and our research activities. As you might already know, there are three kinds of materials which can be classified according to their band diagrams. The first one is metal which has electrons filled up till a particular level known as Fermi level beyond which all levels are empty. Then comes semiconductor where we have two carriers. One is negatively charged electrons which live in the conduction band and one is positively charged holes which live in the valence band. The difference, energy difference between conduction band and valence band is designated as the band gap of a semiconductor. Insulator look very similar to semiconductor. However, in this case, the band gap is quite high so high that the carriers from valence band cannot be excited to the conduction band. As we already said that we primarily work on semiconductor. So let's see how we can excite carriers from valence band to conduction band and in turn produce luminescence, which is the primary reason for the optical properties of nanomaterials. This is how it works. The first step, a photon is absorbed by the material according to its band gap, by which then the electron is transferred from valence band to conduction band and then it generates a positive counterpart of its known as hole. In the next step, when electron relaxes back from conduction band to valence band and it recombines with the hole, it generates a photon of the same energy of the corresponding semiconductor band gap. And this is how semiconductor nanomaterials generates photoluminescence. The vital question is of course, how do we produce them in our laboratory? The primary mechanism by which we produce the semiconductor nanomaterials in our lab is known as polyadol synthesis, also known as chemical synthesis. And we are going to demonstrate that with a model system of cesium layered bromide, which has bright green emission and it was discovered seven years back. To proceed with the synthesis, we have a cesium precursor, a lead precursor, which are metal salts, and we have a solvent in which the precursor will be dissolved, that is one octadecent, and we have two other compounds, organic compounds, which actually helps binding with the solvent. They are oleic acid and the oleolum. When all things are mixed and taken to a high temperature, the bonds of corresponding precursor are broken and there are free ions in the solution, then we change the environment to inert environment which is contains argon and then we proceed with adding further precursor which is benzoyl bromide. This is the bromine source. After centrifugation and washing, we get this bright nanocrystals which looks green in color and this is how the typical size of our system which is around 10 nanometer. This is a Schlink line discovered by German chemist Wilhelm Schlink. This enables us to perform a reaction in a moisture free environment. The two channels allow us to switch between vacuum and inert environment. The tubes are connected to the reaction chamber. This is how it works. Here we are connecting the pipe which goes to the reaction medium with the lower line. This is in turn connected to the cold trap which is connected to the pump to absorb the moisture present in the reaction system. When we switch this to the upper manifold or upper line, this is on one side connected to the oil indicator. This is the oil indicator to check the inner atmosphere pressure. On the other side of this manifold, this is connected with the inert gas source which is argon in our case. The second thing required for the synthesis is a temperature controller. This one is Digisense temperature controller manufactured by Cole Palmer and this is the temperature controller sensor. The tip of this sensor goes to the reaction medium 
and gives feedback to the temperature controller to maintain a constant reaction temperature. The third thing is a heater come starter. This is how with these two buttons we can control the temperature and with this knob we can change the RPM or speed of the magnetic stirrer. And this one is called a heating mantle in which we place our flasks of reaction and this one is a condenser through which we pass the moisture through the vacuum. With all of this in hand, we are now ready to start our reaction to produce cesium lead bromide nanocrystals. After the moistures are removed from the system at high temperature, our system is ready to go to even higher temperature for the addition of final stage precursor benzoyl bromide. It is loaded in the syringe now. Almost ready to inject. And shots fired. The solution immediately turns yellowish green. To prevent the growth of the nanocrystals beyond a certain size, we need to quench the reaction by dripping the entire solution in ice cold water. After the reaction is finished, we need to separate the nanocrystals from the solvent. To do that, we use a very simple principle called the centrifugation. Here, we rotate the entire solution to a such a high revolution per minute where the particles, namely the nanoparticles or cesium lead bromide, get detached from the solution and gets precipitated. This is how it looks.
So we have finished the synthesis of our nanocrystal and we are ready to measure its absorption and emission. This is how a typical steady state absorption spectrometer looks like. So we have a light source on the left, the sample chamber in the middle and the detector on the right side. Light falls from the light source on the sample and it passes to the detector and the change in absorption is detected by the detector. This is a cuvette where the sample is kept for measurement. The cuvette is filled with a sample. and transfer to the sample chamber. After absorption measurement is finished, we are now ready to measure the emission of the sample. This is used to quantify the photoluminescence of the nanomaterials. To understand the mechanism, focus on the light bulb. This is the light source from which the light is reflected in a mirror at 45 degree angle. It then passes on to the sample kept in the cuvette through a lens and through another lens it passes to the detector where the photoluminescence response is recorded and displays in the computer board. Note the y-axis records counts multiplied by 10 Q. This quantifies the photoluminescence or how high the photoluminescence of the nanomaterials is. As can be seen, the peak position is around 520 nanometer which corresponds to the band gap of 2.4 electron volt displayed by cesium lead bromide. In this instrumental setup, we measure the sample absorption under high magnetic field. This is how the light travels through the optical path and this is the sample chamber. It heats the sample through one of the quartz window like shown here. And after transmission through the sample, the light passes to the other side of the magnet via this optical path through the detector.